Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. There's a pattern in the corporate media of warning Democrats to not veer too far to the left. So it was no surprise to see this December 1st headline in the Washington Post. The Post says the revived left is pushing a few policy ideas, like raising the minimum wage, protecting Social Security from benefit cuts, and increasing Wall Street regulations. Inevitably, the Washington Post sees this as trouble. The push from the left carries political risks for Democrats, who could be accused of being reckless about the national debt or insensitive to the demands of business and economic growth. Many Americans are uncomfortable with the notion of the government redistributing income far beyond what happens today in order to accomplish basic elements of the populist agenda. The Post goes on to warn that Democrats who embrace these ideas could run the risk of reducing their electability. But all of these issues are broadly popular with the general public, in some cases overwhelmingly so. And if redistributing income means raising taxes on the rich, Americans are all for that too. The piece closes with a reference to a possible presidential campaign by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Although his chances would be slim at best, he could serve as an agitator who pulled other candidates to the left, or as a potential spoiler if his campaign got off the ground. An agitator or a spoiler, which will it be? On December 1st, CBS 60 Minutes did an embarrassingly fawning story about Amazon and CEO Jeff Bezos. The segment actually started off with this. If there's such a thing as Santa's workshop, this would be it. Now, Charlie Rose's softball treatment of a billionaire wasn't what caught people's eye. No, that came later in the piece, when Amazon gave CBS a sneak peek at something they say they've got in the works. That's right, drone delivery of small items right to your doorstep. Charlie Rose couldn't have been more excited. Bezos kept telling us that he did have a big surprise, something he wanted to unveil for the first time. Let me show you something. Oh, man. Oh my God! Now, critics of the segment, and there were many, pointed out that there are considerable legal, logistical, and just plain practical hurdles. But what the report did was to get everyone talking about Amazon, and the segment just so happened to air before the biggest internet shopping day of the year. So as PR, it worked beautifully. And it's worth remembering that Jeff Bezos also owns the Washington Post. So how did his paper report on the big news? with a few pieces that could hardly have been more flattering, one of which began, Jeffrey P. Bezos has never been known for thinking small. As you can see, the headline wasn't, way to go, boss, but perhaps it should have been. And finally, if you've been watching the media, you've probably seen or heard something about the knockout game, which is presented as an increasingly popular, by some accounts rampant, activity in which predominantly young black people punch random strangers for thrills. The hype has been everywhere, with TV outlets showing violent, often graphic images over and over again. Now, some outlets actually argue that the knockout game isn't getting enough media attention. As we've been reporting the knockout game where predominantly young black males attack random people and then post the assaults online, it's just now starting to get some media attention. While one segment on CNN, which has done its part to contribute to the media hype, wondered if it was all, well, media hype. It's been hard to miss all the media attention. Knockout game, a violent national trend. Teenagers knocking people out for the fun of it. Some of it racially charged. Segment 10, another example of young black Americans committing senseless crimes. Now, police officials say that the knockout may be nothing more than an urban myth. The attacks could be the sort of random assaults that have always occurred. And amidst some of this media panic, some journalists have been raising similar questions about whether the knockout trend is really a trend at all. Nonetheless, there was CNN's Don Lemon, casting himself as the assailant in a bizarre demonstration with a rabbi and former NYPD officer, ostensibly to teach self-defense, in which the rabbi explained that this is all very much like the animal kingdom. Sadly, we know some media aren't likely to let go of a story that sounds like black youths on a deadly rampage through America's streets. And media's obsession might actually be itself inspiring copycat cases 
which we may expect to see reported as further evidence of this trend. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.